Good morning everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Luke. How are you doing? Um, we're just in the docks waiting for a container to be taken off. But I thought while I'm waiting I'll uh, get some dash cam set up. Looks like someone could be coming over now. Um, I'm going to keep this short because I'm not supposed to be filming in the docks. Today we go to Bath. Um, it's a BA1 post go, so it's pretty much in city centre. I used to work at Bath. The roads are, uh, I'm gonna swear then. The roads are rubbish. Very tight. Probably not ideal for an Arctic. And the place I've got to go to, one way in is a width limit uh, of two meters. So I'm too big to go in that way. And the other way is a weight limit. So I'm guaranteed to uh, go into a weight limited area. But um, that's the case. That's where we got to go. And also the place we're going to, they got two warehouses, and I'm not sure which one I got to go to. So um, hopefully we go to the right one. But you will be coming with me, you will see, which is great. Anyway, I'm gonna go. Uh, gotta get this container off, get another one put on, and then I'll meet you on the road. Okay, we are now off. We are loaded, little, 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 I can't get my words out this morning. We're loaded with um, a 40 foot box. Not entirely sure how much it weighs because the paperwork says zero kilograms. It isn't empty. Even if it was empty, it would weigh something. Um, so obviously their system's not up and running. I don't know, if I were to guess, I would say it probably weighs maybe 15 ton. That is just a complete guess, but it doesn't weigh mega amount of, of weight. But um, anyway, so we're heading to Bath. I just put the postcode in onto the sat-nav to see which way my sat-nav takes me. There's a bike broken down there. See what? Um, and it was literally taking me straight through Bath. It was telling me to go all the way up to the M4, go past Swindon and then come off the M4 at Bath and then go through Bath city centre. And I'm telling you, that's bad enough in a car, let alone an Arctic. It was, um, if you know Bath at all, Gay Street. Um, that is a very tight road, it's a one-way system. And I don't like the idea of going down that one-way system in a lorry, so. <laughs> um, what we decided to do is come in from the south rather than from the north, which is probably better anyway. Uh, we're going to take the M27, which is what we're on now, take this up to um, the M3, take the M3 up to Winchester, come off at Winchester, follow the A34 up until the A303, and then we're going to head west where we're going to pick up the A36, and that'll take us all the way to Bath. Um, and then we'll be on the south side of the river, and then we'll cross over the river literally a mile away from where we need to be so i'm hoping that's going to be the easiest way in they'll probably be the easiest way back out as well but um we will see eta is 10 minutes to eight uh which is great because it's not booked in until 10 o'clock so we're two hours ahead of schedule um i'm in two minds of what to do because i'm on two hours and 10 minutes of drive time now so we, i can only do two hours and 20 minutes of driving but two hours and five minutes away so I've got 15 minutes leeway. What I'm planning to do is get there, they let me straight in, and I'll have a break while they unload me. That's what I'm hoping. But if they don't let me in, they tell me to bugger off, I then gotta find somewhere to park, and that's gonna be impossible in Bath, with an Arctic. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do. Um, just trying to think actually, I said earlier there were two yards and one of the yards there was like a lane that goes up. It's so a worst case scenario, I'll just reverse up there and have a break up there. But um, yeah, I'm going to try and get there. We'll see how we go. If I get caught in traffic anywhere on the way there, then um, I'll stop and have a break. If I can. But um, the trouble is, as soon as we get off the M3, it's all A road, so there should be laybys, but there won't be any services or anything like that. So we'll just have to find a layby to pull in, worst case scenario. So yeah, let's crack on and um, I will see you there. Watching it end, again and again. I feel it in ways you follow me. I'm drifting to places I should leave. So close to the edge of something so perfect. We were too scared to take the leap. I'm missing the way.
I did flash you. Yeah. Right. We're now in Bath. Got some tight lanes to, uh, well, not really tight lanes, but just got some lanes to navigate through. Oh, I can't remember what I said, but I used to work in Bath when I worked for Curious PC World. It was the first door that I worked in out of three. Up here, they're building some houses, a lush view of Bath. You can see Bath now as well, look. Like really hilly, lush, lush views. Expensive delivery, I think. But uh, nice views. Not ideal for an Arctic, though. But I do think we're going in the easy way, definitely. Because we were going to come in from the M4, and that's just not on. Definitely, definitely not on. Right, we're three and a half miles away. Um, and we're still 15 minutes away. So what I'm going to do is do some uh, some more time lapse footage of um, me driving through Bath City Centre, and I'll see you when we're a little bit closer. mile and a half away. Back there I didn't know which lane I needed to be in so I took up both lanes. Um, a because it was quiet and there was no one really behind me uh, apart from one car that decided to overtake me anyway and um, B because I didn't know which way I was going so if I needed to take a sharp left I needed to be in the right hand side lane anyway or the middle lane and if I needed to go straight on I needed to be in the middle lane so I just hovered across the two. No big problem. It does say in the highway code allow room for larger vehicles. So that's what I was exercising. Exercising my right as a larger vehicle to take up more room than needed. Right. So I'm going to go right here and we are going over a bridge. Take it nice and wide so the trailer don't catch. There we go. <coughs> and then up here we need to take a left. Let's put the window up. Take a left over here. So I'm on three hours, 54 minutes of driving. So I've got 35 more minutes left before I need to stop. And I'm literally four minutes away. So I've done well to uh, get the driving time sorted. But I'm also, I've also got here slightly early as well. I'm not due here till 10 o'clock, like I said, uh, but it's actually 25 to eight by the time I get there. So, um, what's that, half seven, half eight, half nine, it's two and a half hours early. So they might not tip me, they might tell me to bugger off. Who knows, but um, I'm hoping to get a break in before they even turn up for work because they don't start till half eight and I'm getting there at 20 to eight. So it's more than enough time to get a 45 minute break in on the side of the road. That's if I can actually park on the side of the road. I'm not entirely sure yet. I'm probably gonna have to park up, block in an entrance a little bit and then go and have a look, just do a bit of uh, scouting. Uh, this is gonna be fun getting down here by the looks of it. gone now so we're ever so slightly committed don't want to meet another large vehicle coming down that's all he's slowing right down come on matey boy in the red cars letting me out thank you very much mr audi be able to get past this bus yeah so we've got to go down left but the problem is um, there's weight limits all along it see there's the one weight weight limit there look so you can't get down there it's too tight to get down there anyway this next left 
coming up. Do, do, do. No, hang on, it's coming up in a sec. Redmore Park. So there's a left here, but that's a dead end. So it's saying don't go down there. And then the next left is the one that we should be able to take, but there's also a weight limit. But it looks like the best option. So that's the one I'm taking. Left down here. It is signposted for the industrial estate, so that's good. Got a horse box there, and there's another lorry coming as well, and a car. Can't actually get round yet because there's vehicles on the other side of the road. Come on, car. Right, sorry, I'm, I know I'm being a bit quiet, it's just I'm trying to concentrate. So there's houses all over here and there's not really anywhere for me to park, which obviously I need to do. I want that car behind me to go away so I can just come to a stop if need be. Do, 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 do. Oh wow, that's pretty tight. Are these cars parked there. I'm gonna have to go on the curb to get through this. Absolutely no other option. So I might need to go down there on the right. That was one potential place where I need to go. But I'm just gonna park here. I'm gonna speak to him. Ah, there's someone in there, so I'm gonna go speak to him and then find out where I'm going. Uh, yeah, I've got to say, I, got, I do have my hazards on, mate. Right, see you in a bit. Right, so, as expected, it is the other one I've got to go to. The other uh, unit. They call it Unit 9. They said, you should say on my paperwork, to go there. Well, it doesn't. So now we've got to do a tight 180.
speak to these guys. Uh, reception, goods in, straight on. Uh, I'll go straight on then. You can say goods in, straight on. Put the hazards on, I'm going to go speak to somebody. See you again in a bit. This video is sponsored by Trailer Training UK, operating across the south delivering HGV class 1 and 2 courses as well as weekly CPC courses. They also do car and trailer courses and many more. I have heard nothing but good things about these guys, check out their online presence, they got a 91.7% first time pass rate and if you quote Luke see so you get a 5% discount on top of the 5% price fee they already have. Therefore, you're 100% guaranteed the best price. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. Right, we're done. Let's crack on. So, we, we ended up tipping around about 8 o'clock. We went in there to turn around and just come out here. And uh, started tipping about 8 o'clock. Now it's 9 o'clock. So we're tipping for about an hour. So, all in all, that's not too bad. Looks like he's letting me out. Is the car behind? Realise what he's doing? Yeah. So, we um, got to leave Bath now, head straight back down to Southampton. We are going to hit some traffic on the way out because, like I said, it's 9 o'clock, but it shouldn't be too bad. We should have missed most of the bad traffic. So hopefully we'll be getting out relatively quick. Now, when we come to this end of the road, we came from the right, but the sat-nav is telling me to go left. But I've had a look. It looks like that's going to be a, a good way to go. So that's the way we're going. Just taking my beacons off. That's the way we're going to go, uh, up via Lower Bristol Road, I think it's called, and then um, we'll go from there. Thank you very much. So, uh, a few things with regards to the GoPros that I just want to talk about. So, I have changed the settings a little bit since the last vlog. Uh, before, I was uh, recording in Full HD 60fps, now I'm recording in 2.7K. 60 fps i'll still be uploading in full hd but i'm hoping the extra um resolution of 2.7k will mean i can zoom in on some things and it'll still be a good image that's the plan anyway out we go so yeah um 2.7k is what i'm recording in which means the file sizes are quite large each clip is about one and a half gig maybe two gig and i got two cameras so each clip is about four gig and um there could be in excess of 10 clips in a single vlog which means uh each video is in, in excess of a 40 gigabyte file so it's going to take absolutely ages to render and compress down into an uploadable size but hopefully the quality is going to be good so that's what i'm hoping um done a couple of uh, extra changes as well so the GoPro that's facing me is no longer in wide mode it's now in linear mode uh, and what that means is I should be a bit closer to you I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing but basically you should be able to see me a bit more <laughs> and um, it's not so much of a wide angle lens so you, you won't be able to see right over there in the corner for example the passenger seat it should sort of cut off about here I'm hoping so um, that means I haven't got to zoom in and then lose quality, picture quality. Green lights, we are going. Um, what other changes have I done? I think that's it really. The, the dash cam is still on wide, not super wide because I thought that was too wide, just wide. And it, I said wide a few times there, I do apologize. Um, some people were saying that it looked like I was going really fast because of the 60 frames per second. It looks like I'm going really fast. Uh, I'm not just going normal speed, it's just because there's more frames, it's more fluent. Which is good. Uh, and also, while I stopped there just now, I just downloaded the footage from the GoPros this morning on the way up to Bath, and I noticed that um, on the dash cam this morning, while it was dark out, you could see a blue reflecting light on the bottom. 
that's my new MAN sign, which is in the uh, on the dash. It's on the, like behind the dash in the window, but it's obviously when it's dark out, it's capturing capturing um, on the GoPro. So I've got two options. I can either move the GoPro over here where I am, out of the way of the blue light, or turn the blue light off when I'm vlogging in the dark. It's not a bright light, it's just um, it's close to the GoPro, so it's just picking it up, that's all. Um, but yeah, but I don't do much filming in the dark anyway, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. But anyway, let's uh, crack on back to Southampton. And uh, I've got no idea what we're doing yet. ETA there is 20 past 11, but obviously that could change. We will see. But yeah, see you guys when we're loaded. Hello everybody, welcome back. Right, a lot of things have happened in the last uh, few hours. So we left that place about nine o'clock this morning. It's now nearly one o'clock in the afternoon. So it's only four hours since I last seen you. But um, quite a lot of, has happened. So basically, uh, long story short, there's no work on. Um, it's something to do with Chinese New Year. I know it was a month or two ago, but it's, it's now affecting the shipping line. Um, I guess it takes a month or so for the boats to get over here, I don't know. What's going on over here? There, people are breaking. I'll get over a little bit just to give them some room. No, I won't because matey boy here is not allowing me to. Thanks, mate. He saw me indicate and sped up. Um, anyway, yeah. So there's not a lot of work on. So there's nothing else for me to do today. I am loaded. I've got a 20 foot container on now, and we're making our way to Hayes. It's booked for the morning. Um, so basically, um, plan was get to the services on the M4 for half past one in the afternoon, park up for the day and the night, and then start tomorrow morning at about eight o'clock and deliver for nine o'clock. That was the plan anyway. But I've just, got, I've just had a phone call about an hour ago saying, call us ASAP. So I called the planners ASAP and um, they're not sure if they actually wanted it or not. So in the end, I had to stop at Winchester Services. Um, I stopped there, had a break, and um, just f waited to find out whether or not they actually wanted it. They do want it. Uh, they've rescheduled the booking, and now it's half past six in the morning they want it, which is not a problem. There's a car on my left, and he's not realised that this road's coming into a single lane. You're going to cut in front. idiots on the road man um yeah so the plan is still the same we're we are heading to the services and we will be parking up uh rather than rather than parking up at half past one we are now going to be parking up for about two o'clock um so we're about an hour away from the services i'm ever so slightly faster than this Citroen, so i am going to continue on this lane so yeah to come to a o'clock we, we will be parking up we will be finished for the day and then it's got to deliver at half past six tomorrow morning and I'm only like a mile or two away from where I need to be, so I probably don't even need to start until six o'clock. So, a bit of a lay-in tomorrow as well. Um, and like I said, it's so quiet at the moment that there is nothing else for me to do tomorrow. So after this delivery tomorrow morning at half past six, once it's done, and bear in mind it might only take an hour, half past seven, an hour and a half back to the docks, uh, eight, half past eight, nine o'clock, yeah, nine o'clock it'll be, take the container off, deliver uh, take the trailer back to Marchwood um, and come 11 o'clock in the morning I could be on my way back home so and I could be back in the yard before one o'clock tomorrow which would be nice but <laughs> there's some more bad news because um, because there's no work on that means next week I've got to do something differently so I'm not on containers next week next week I'm doing some work with boots delivering to boot stores during the night so it's, it's literally night work. I think I've got, I've got to start on Sunday um, till Thursday. Sunday night till Thursday night, I'm sleeping out. So it'll be five nights in a row, sleeping in the cab. And um, I get paid for a night out on every single one of those nights. And um, the thing is, it's so, I can't remember exactly what the boss said, but it's basically I deliver the, the trailer, help unload, when it's unloaded, I go to bed and sleep in the cab, in the you know in the bed, and about one two o'clock in the morning they come wake me up, and then I drive back to the yard again. So I'm still sleeping in the truck, uh, well still sleeping during the night, 
rather than working throughout the night. I'm, I'm delivering late evening, sleeping, and, and then waking up early morning, sort of thing. So it's I don't know. It's hard. To, it's hard to explain. I'm I'm planning on vlogging at some point next week to try and explain what it is I'm actually doing. But um, basically, I get paid a night out for every night plus extra money for working on the Sunday. So all in all, for next week, uh, I'm going to be earning seven hundred and seventy-five pound for the one week. So that's not bad. And it's easy work, and while I'm on duty, I'm sleeping in the cab, I'm resting. So, win-win, I think. The only downside is my um, girlfriend don't really want me doing it, because I'm not going to see her much. And I won't see my kids either for the week. Because when I'll be coming home, they'll be at school. And when I'm going back to work, they'll be finishing school. So, I'm not going to be able to see it very much. But it's only temporary, it's only for a week, and then she'll be back on the containers again. But it's doing something else, something different. I think it's going to be pallets and cages, so it's, it's, some of it will need to be handballed off. So do me a bit of good doing a bit of exercise anyway, I suppose. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's the plan for next week. Anyway, let's crack on to the services. I don't know anywhere to park other than the services around Hayes' area, so I'm going to have to pay 25 to £30 pound for the night parking the services. Grab some food and relax. i got all evening. And I'm going to edit this video as well, this very vlog, because it's ready to upload the weekend. So yeah, see you in a bit, and uh, we'll be at the services. Right, so we've gone past um, Hales, which is where we're going. We've had to go past it to come back on ourselves, so then we're facing the right way in the morning. The downside to having to do that is that we've had to basically come into the very outskirts of London, but Junction 2 on the M4. So um, yeah, so now we're heading back out of London again. And we're going to stop at the, I think it was called Heston Services. So we're going to stop eastbound. We've gone past it. No, we're going westbound. Yeah, westbound. So we've gone past it, eastbound, turn around, go back westbound, um, park up, and then it should be in the morning from there, about a 10 minutes drive, if that, um, to, to the destination tomorrow morning, which um, is booked for half past six in the morning. So like I said, probably won't need to get out of bed much before six o'clock which is really good. We're only five minutes away. So uh, let's back on and I'll see you when we get there. Less than half a mile away from the services, in fact 300 yards coming up, so we're just about pulling now. And um, according to the sat nav, to go to the place we're delivering to in the morning, it's six minutes away, which is two miles. So I'm literally parked two miles away from where I need to be, which is great. First thing in the morning, like I said, get up at six o'clock, do my checks, leave about quarter past six. Actually, you'll probably get up just before six, do the checks. Leave about quarter past six, get there before half past six, hopefully get tipped, and then uh, we can go home nice and early. But here we are in the services. Somewhere. There we go. Didn't look like services then. <laughs> Uh, HGV's left lane, so we want to be in the left, that's good. Slow. Is that a big bump? No. Oh. Free parking for two hours. Does it say how much? £31. No, £29. That's good. Not too bad. Travel launch, W. H. Smith, motives over there. This is tonight's home. Twenty-nine pound. Twenty-nine pounds. Uh, HGV straight on. I guess that's coaches down there. Nope, that's cars. Oh man, it looks quite busy. I was hoping it wasn't going to be this busy. might not even have anywhere to park yet. Is 
Is that a free one there? That's a free one there, I'm gonna have to park there. It's very cozy. It's only like quarter past two. Yes, I did just do a blindside reverse and got in the first time. Thank you very much. Just going to pull slightly forward because uh, that's a foreign lorry which means his, right, his left hand door is going to open up. I don't want him opening it up into my door. So at least like that, you can get out. Cool. Yeah, I was not expecting it to be this busy here at two o'clock in the afternoon, but then again, we are near London, so I guess it's the last place to park before you go to London. The other side, I guess it's the last place to park on the way out of London, or the first place to park outside of London. So, um, yeah, let's... Um, do some checks, make sure everything's all right before we clock off. Oh, I'm just going to pay, pay for parking. 